It's a shocking crime that makes headlines. Disturbing weekend attack on a local Uber driver. He was scratched, strangled, and bitten by his passenger. And we want to warn you, it's not easy to watch. It all starts on April 15th, 2021 in Tampa, Florida. Michael Hassey is a welder by trade. To make extra cash on the side, he drives for a popular rideshare company. I have a full-time job that works me like 55 hours a week. And it was a pretty easy way to make some extra cash. But Michael knows the job has potential downsides. Dealing with people that were intoxicated, people throwing up in my car and being a little rowdy or loud. But yeah, I was driving for about six or seven months. I did close to 500 trips and I never had an issue. But on this April afternoon, everything changes. It was a Saturday, so I figured I might as well drive a little bit. Your phone will just ding and say that you have a request from someone. I got the notification around like 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. At the pickup location, Michael finds two women, a mother and her daughter. Her daughter, who was the one who called, and she introduced me to her mom and asked me if I could please get her home safe. I wasn't thinking anything of it. I picked her up from a really nice upscale bar in South Tampa, and she looked like my grandpa, like completely normal, just the most average person you've ever seen in your entire life. And she ended up put passing out in the back seat, kind of like dozing off. I was driving her for about 20 minutes before she woke up. That's when Michael realizes something isn't right. She just kind of like was making weird noises, like grunting sounds. And I asked her, are you OK? Then something terrifying happens. She put her hands on me while I was driving the car. This lady is both of her arms wrapped around my neck, choking me out. She violently attacks her driver, refusing to let go of him. Michael is stunned and instinctively manages to hit record on his cell phone, which is mounted on his dashboard. He can't understand why this woman is suddenly attacking him. I've never had someone wake up and just like be in a completely different state of mind. I told her, please take your hands off me. I'm going to call your daughter. And as soon as I said the words, I'm going to call your daughter, it was like a switch flip. I could see, I'll never forget the face she made of me through my rear view mirror. Eyes just like solid black and punched me in the side of the face. He's in a no-win situation. He took a selfie video because he was afraid that for whatever reason, she calls the police that he would get in trouble. And it seems this woman is not letting up. She actually reached over my shoulders and grabbed my forearms while I was driving 50, 60 miles an hour and tried to get me to wreck multiple times. I was having to honk at other cars to get out of the way. All of this is going on while this lady is, has her both of her arms wrapped around my neck. And at this point, I'm just trying to concentrate on driving the car and not wrecking into anyone. Just think about that for a moment. You're driving 60 miles an hour, and she's choking him for a significant amount of time. She's obviously concerned what's going to happen. He doesn't want to pass out while driving, which is even worse. I had no option to stop the car. I'm in the middle of a major highway. As the ride continues, Michael can only hope that he makes it to his destination safely. But this woman is about to take her actions to another level. Stop fighting him! Stop. Michael is in a complete panic. He's in danger. And so is everyone else on the road. The driver of a motor vehicle being attacked from behind, being rendered incapable of driving and steering, turns that vehicle into a possible missile. Somehow, he manages to get off at an exit and pull into a parking lot. There was a pizza place right next to where I stopped. I was screaming and honking the horn for help. 
Hearing the commotion, restaurant staff soon circle his car. No! I just don't want to put my hands on it. Michael's immediate concern is they don't mistake him for the bad guy. I wanted everyone to know that I was the victim of this. I know if I would have defended myself and the cops would have pulled up and I'm hitting her in the face or something like that, I don't see myself just, you know, walking away from that. One person begins filming with their phone. While another calls the cops. Before I knew it, there were like 10 people outside the court. Some people reach through the open window and try to pull the woman off Michael. But his attacker is relentless. Even when I finally got the car pulled over safely and there were there was an audience of people watching her, it did not phase her. Please stop. Please stop. But she continued and even started to amp it up and get more violent. And then she does something that shocks everyone. She bit me in the neck. No, please stop. What are you doing? She sinks her teeth, uh, a la Mike Tyson, into the back of his neck and, and takes out uh, a half dollar sized chunk out of his neck. She bites him and draws blood. Stop biting him. Stop. I was just so shocked by what was going on. I really didn't know what to do at all. I was just pretty much getting suffocated for six minutes before that, trying to prevent me and her from both getting killed in a car accident. It felt like I had a grown man's arms around my neck. I couldn't, I couldn't pry her on. It's fine, it's fine. She's got her entire body weight up against my neck in the seat. Michael is desperate to get away from the violent woman. After she bit me, I freed myself up and got out of the car. He even manages to grab the car keys before the woman tries to drive off. But he is far from OK. I stood up for a second, and I ended up having to like sit down to like catch my breath, because I, I was literally winded. Having hands around my neck for that long, it almost felt like they were still around my neck. Stunned by the crazed woman's behavior, everyone jumps in to help. All the bystanders that were watching surrounded my car and held my door shut so she couldn't open any of the doors. We need the cops here, like, now. At one point, she actually climbs into the front seat, and it looked like she was trying to get out through the window. Don't They closed all the doors and tried to keep her inside. Finally, help arrives. It took the authorities about 10 minutes to get there. For me, it felt like a lifetime. They took her out of my car and they put her right on the ground and put her in handcuffs. She was giving the cops a really hard time and in front of the police officers, she threatened to kill me. Then in the back of one of the police cars, she threw up. The woman is identified as 55-year-old Michelle Stillwell. She was charged with, with aggravated battery, which is a felony, uh, and tampering with a witness. So she received two felony charges out of this. She could do years in prison. After the attack, Michael needs medical attention. I went to the emergency room and got a tetanus shot and a rabies shot. On my discharge paperwork, it said assault victim and human bite. I'm lucky that I had the seat in between me and her because it could have been worse. I, I don't want, I, and he never gets any explanation for why she targeted him. Why? I'd love to know what was going on two hours before she did that to me. I have to believe it's extreme intoxication or extreme drug use of some sort. I'm not going to speculate as to specifically why, but gosh, you, you would seem to think that, that extreme levels of intoxication would be what fueled this. The video of the wild ordeal goes viral. There is new video tonight of a disturbing weekend attack on a local Uber driver. Yeah, the driver says he was scratched, strangled, and bitten by his passenger. Exclusive video from a witness asking to remain anonymous shows the Uber driver with his hands up and can be heard saying multiple times, I can't breathe. I woke up one day and it was on the news. 
it's hard for me to watch, to be honest with you. Michael says he really doesn't like to think about that day anymore. But along with his lawyer, he is using the video to push for more protection for rideshare drivers. I'm hoping that the rideshare services take an increased like, safety measure to protect the people driving and the passengers because I feel like neither party is safe. And Michael says from now on, he's sticking to his day job. No, I will never work for a rideshare company ever again. It really was traumatizing.